Y'all, is this really the next best thing to Robert Redford? <laughs> Come on. Welcome to Highfalutin Low Carb, the random web series where we find and test the best low carb recipes this crazy internet has to offer. Today, we're tackling something from an old cookbook called The Next Best Thing to Robert Redford. Stay tuned. All right, guys, in this video, we're taking a break from the recipe battles and we're doing an original recipe remake from an old cookbook that our dear friend, uh, my friend Allison, gave me. Uh, you know I love remaking old recipes. And this is from the Covered Bridge cookbook from the town of Rowan, Indiana. And I got tickled to death when I was reading through the recipes here and Kim Palmer has something called the next best thing to Robert Redford. <laughs> Turn the page, Mildred Hosier has the exact same recipe written a little bit differently and it's called something special. Well, it also is in a lot of other cookbooks too, uh, as better than SEX. But because I don't want YouTube to come after me, we're gonna call it better than Sax. Uh. And because I don't want Robert Redford to come sue me because I ain't got no money. So this is better than Sax, uh. but how do we get started? This is a three part pudding based recipe and I have made a keto low carb version of the high uh, carb version there. Um, if you don't know, I have a personal channel as well. It's called West Shoemaker. I'll leave a link at the end of this video where we actually make the real version of this if you're so inclined. I'm not leaving keto cooking behind, far from it. Um, I'm just doing some other things over there. Now, before we begin, I need to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, AG1. AG1 is a jam-packed all-in-one nutritional formula that does the work of nine different products. It's got over 75 ingredients, including vitamins, minerals, probiotics, prebiotics, digestive enzymes, adaptogens, greens, and other superfoods designed to increase your energy, assist your immune system, boost your gut health, and make you feel great all over. It really helps fill in any nutritional gaps you have in your diet, and I can definitely tell if I've gone a couple of days without using it. It's never chalky or dusty like some other brands, and it's allowed us to get rid of a lot of other products in our medicine cabinet and our refrigerator, and one scoop per day in 12 ounces of water is truly all that we need. Now, y'all know that I have never accepted a sponsorship from a product or service that I don't fully endorse and use myself. And in fact, I was a, an AG1 customer long before I was a a partner and I will continue to be because of the results that I see with my own eyes and feel with my own fields. <laughs> now, as important as what is in AG1 is what is not in AG1. There are no preservatives, no sweeteners, no gluten, no dairy, no corn, no artificial flavors, no artificial colors. There's no sucrose or dextrose or other fillers. So it is perfectly aligned for all kinds of lifestyles, including low carb, keto, paleo, vegan, and vegetarian. Now, if you want to experience all the benefits of AG1 yourself, be sure to use the link in the video description below or here on the screen. If you use that link, you're going to get five free travel packs and a year supply of the vitamin D drop. So thank you, AG1, for sponsoring this video. It's sponsorships like yours that keep channels like mine on the air, and for that, I am truly appreciative. So guys, be sure to go check it out. Video, the link, uh, the link is in the video description below. You'll get five free travel packs and um, a year supply of the vitamin D. All right, let's go make some better than sacks. Uh. Come on. All right, so our, the first of this is going to be a crust for this. We've got a 9 by 13 casserole pan, and her the original recipe called for, obviously, flour and butter and some nuts. Um, we want this to be a hard, hard cookie crust because it's got to keep up with all the pudding and cream and whipped cream and Cool Whip and all the puddingy stuff on top of it, right? So it's got to be able to stand up to that. So I've got three quarters of a cup of almond flour, and normally I'd tell you to sift it, but you don't really need to for this, so don't sip y'all. <laughs> um, to this, we're gonna add a quarter of a cup of almond, uh, sorry, coconut flour. This, the combination of two just sort of uh, breaks up the monotony of the grainy um, almond flour, and coconut flour is much more absorbent. To this, we're gonna add a, a half a cup, which is a stick of butter, um, unsalted butter, and we've melted that. In that goes, and we're also gonna add in a full cup of chopped uh, walnuts. Um, you can use whatever your chopped favorite nuts are, but um, I'm using walnuts today, so i um, probably gonna get it this easier without that. So let's just mix this up together. I've got the oven on 350, and we're gonna just sort of press this into the bottom of this casserole pan here, and um, 
bake it for about 20 minutes, start watching it. It's not gonna look really brown, but um, it will firm up as it cools. So I'm gonna do that now, pour this right in, make sure you've got all this mixed together. See why we didn't really need to sift it because it's just gonna make a hard crumble, crumble crust. Get out of the way. And into the pan this goes, and sometimes it's easier to just to use impeccably clean fingers and press this in. So nine by 13 pan, get it fairly thin because there's not a lot of it. You can probably do this in a bigger nine by nine, I mean a smaller nine by nine, it'll just be taller, right? Okay, that's about as good as we're gonna get it there. So I'm gonna put this in the oven, like I said, at 350 for about 20 minutes, and then I'll uh, bring this out and show you what it looks like. Um, and then that's gotta cool before we go on to the rest of the recipe. So I'll meet you back here in just a bit. Okay, now our crust is in the oven and it's still cooking, but we need to whip some cream. Now the original recipe, of course, being the age and era that it was, calls for Cool Whip. Cool Whip. Yeah, Cool Whip. Cool Whip. Cool Whip. Cool Whip. Cool Whip. You're saying it weird. And for a lot of people, that's fine. You can use Cool Whip. There are some sugar-free, zero sugar options, but those still have some uh, suspect ingredients, perhaps. If you're just eating low carb, you can get away with that. I'll let you be the person to decide that. But if you do use Cool Whip, it's gonna be a full uh, 16 ounces, two of these. But for us, we're gonna use um, heavy whipping cream. So it needs about 16 ounces. So I'm gonna use 12 ounces of heavy cream, and we're gonna whip that until it's almost double in size. And so I just wanted to get that on the, uh, in the mixer. It's just easier for me to do in a stand mixer. So I'm gonna beat that until it's pretty much doubled in size and that's just gonna go live in the fridge. We're gonna use uh, half of it in part of the recipe and the other half in the other recipe. So I'm gonna whip that now and just speed this up so you can watch it. And um, we'll be back as soon as the crust is cooled and our cream is whipped. So our whipped cream is in the fridge, just sort of waiting. Our uh, crust is almost about to come out of the oven. And now we need to make the two other um, portions of this. The first is the cream cheese and sweetener uh, filling layer. And so that's, a, and um, you've got a eight ounce package of uh, cream cheese, full fat cream cheese. It's been kind of softened. And I'm just gonna sort of cream that up a little bit. And while that's going, I'm gonna add in two thirds of a cup of your sweetener of choice. That can be allulose, uh, that could be powdered erythritol, which is what I'm using here. Either of those would work. And if you want it sweeter than that, the original recipe calls for a cup of sugar. I found the original recipe when I made it for my other channel um, to be a little sweet. So I cut this down to about two thirds of a cup, but you may wanna add a little bit more. So I'm gonna do that now. We're gonna, uh, then we're gonna make our pudding, but um, because this blender, this uh, mixer makes a mess, I'm gonna try to do this as quickly as I can. We're not trying to beat any air in this. We're just getting this smooth and creamy and spreadable and mixing in the sweetener with the uh, uh, cream cheese. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, just wanted to quickly show you the crust is out of the oven now. Kind of um, did get a little bit lightly brown and you want it crispy and crunchy. So this is gonna cool in the back on a cooling rack to get it quick, get you cooled as quick as we can. Now, despite the sneezing fit from all the powdered sweetener and the entire mess that I have made, y'all, I have used this mixer for six years on YouTube and every single time I use it, I fuss and complain because it slings whatever I'm doing and I still ain't ever bought another one. Well, that's my fault, I guess. So we've got our cream cheese and our um, sweetener mixed, and here is our whipped cream, and we're gonna use about half of that into, yeah. And the easiest way to do this, we wanna mix it into here, is just slowly mix it in with the mixer. You're just trying to add a little, lighten this up a little bit and make it more spreadable. The other half of that is gonna go on the top as a finished uh, topping, so I'm just gonna mix this together. Okay, so this is our cream cheese mixture. Let me just knock this down. And all this is just gonna, I'm gonna put it in the fridge for a minute so that it can um, uh, stay uh, cold while we're waiting on our other thing to cool. Now, 
we're using the same dirty mixer, we're gonna make our pudding. And this is where, okay, you gotta have pudding for this, right? And guess what pudding is? It's, it's a lot of starch and other things. So this is, um, I've used these for a while. This is called Simply Delish is the brand. Let me move my big old head. Um, I'll put a link down below. I find them on Amazon. I found them at Whole Foods. They've changed their packaging recently. It is a keto pudding. Um, it's sweetened with um, erythritol and um, stevia. It does have uh, some starches in it, so I'm going to let that be um, up to you, but you need to have something to make a pudding. And this is one of the only products I've seen that's like that. There are some other brands. This is the only one I can vouch for that I have used. Um, so we're going to put a one packet of, they are, how big are they? That's a 1.7 ounce. One packet of chocolate. First of all, I've got three cups of um, almond milk. Three cups of almond. You can also use coconut milk, unsweetened, of course. Our chocolate pudding mix and a box of vanilla. So two boxes of pudding mix in the three cups. And then we're gonna just beat this. Um, this pudding is a little bit different. It's an instant pudding. And instead of um, whatever it is that makes instant pudding, traditional instant pudding, this, this requires uh, time with a mixer, okay? So it's gonna take three or four minutes to get to a pudding consistency. Don't even worry about wiping off your blenders. It's just all a big pudding catastrophe. So um, I'm gonna do that now and speed this up so you don't have to watch it. And then everything's gonna cool and we're gonna come back and assemble it and taste it. So it's gonna go quick. If you wanna see how to um, print this out, this recipe, it's gonna be here on the screen and I'll leave a link down below. It's highfalutinlowcarb.com and it'll be the top recipe there. Um, probably uh, better than Saks or um, Robert Redford. <laughs> Please don't sue me. All right, guys, so all of our pieces are assembled and we're ready to get put together this um, Robert Redford keto pudding extravaganza, I guess you could say. <laughs> all right, so our crust is cooled. This is the first thing we made. This is the um, cream cheese and sweetener. And I'm just gonna put this on top and we're gonna spread this over the cooled crust. You need to make sure this crust is cooled. Otherwise it will just melt all of this, which still tastes good. Just. I ain't as pretty as Robert Redford, I reckon. <laughs> what an unusual name. Thank you, Kim. I believe her name was Kim and uh, Meredith, uh, who created the recipes, the town of Roanne, and the covered bridge, which you probably needed because of all the pudding that I have slung all over this kitchen, needed a covered bridge. And uh, mostly my friend Allison for sharing uh, the cookbook. All of my friends know when they come visit, bring a, bring a cookbook with you that you think I'll like. Okay, so spread this on. Oh, oops. You don't wanna tear the crust up like I just did, but if you do, guess what? It all goes in the same hole anyway. And there's no pretty way to serve this. You're just gonna put it in a bowl. It will sort of, um, come together in the fridge if it lasts that long. I will also tell you that the keto version does not last as long in the fridge as the one with Cool Whip just because your cream, the cream, whipped cream will eventually break. Again, it's not, doesn't taste bad and it's not bad for you, but it just won't be the luxurious dessert that it could once have been. Okay. Mm, gosh, that is so good. Now, this is our pudding mix that we've mixed together with um, the almond milk. It's vanilla and chocolate. This is our keto pudding. Again, the links for that product are below if you want to try it. Um, I'm not affiliated in any way. It's not sponsored. It's just a product that I have used in the past and keep on hand for things such as this because you know what regardless of this recipe take some of the um the components of this and you can do a lot of things with it truthfully um get out of the way the pudding goes on top and then on top of this goes our the remainder of the whipped cream so i'm going to speed all this up now and then we're going to come back and taste this thing look at that oh that's pretty All right, now, 
from here, you can shave a little bit. If you've got a Lily's chocolate bar, some sort of uh, sugar-free chocolate, shave a chocolate bar on top or dust with a little bit of uh, cocoa powder or even some sprinkled pecan, uh, uh, walnuts, whatever's left over. All of that would be beautiful. Nobody said it was going to be the prettiest um, winner in the beauty pageant. Well, I guess with a name like Robert Redford, maybe they did imply that, but mine ain't that pretty. So the important part is what does it taste like? So there's no easier way to serve this, no easy way rather. You just gotta, and you're gonna have to push down and break, hear that? Break that crunchy crust. It's that um, alternating textures that make this so wonderful. Now I'm gonna put um, nutritional information below so that you can check that out. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. All right, I need to get a quick thumbnail photo of this too. Um, oh, darn, Wesley, drop my spoon right in it. Look at that, looky, looky, looky. Looks good. I know it's good, because I've made it before. But here we go, crunchy, creamy, cold, cool, pudding, Robert Redford, yum. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Better than Saks, indeed. Uh. That's something special. Thanks, Meredith. <laughs> All right, guys. So there you have it. Is it uh, truly the next best thing to Robert Redford? Is it truly better than Saks? Uh. <laughs> you be the judge of that. Make sure to uh, check out the link below and um, visit uh, my website, Highfalutin Low Carb, to try this recipe and many others. Um, I say it every time, these videos are a way for me to maintain my low carb way of eating and looking in the end of that camera as often as I can helps keep me honest. So I appreciate that you guys have come along for the journey. Be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button if you haven't already and make sure you hit the bell button to let you know as soon as I release a new video. These are important things to let YouTube know that you like this and other people might like it as well. So help me out with that. Thank you again to my sponsor, AG1. Uh, be sure to use the link in the, in the video description or here on the screen, and you will get um, five free travel packs plus the vitamin D drops if you will um, check out their link below. I say it all the time, uh, sponsorships aren't why I do this, they're how I do this. So AG1, thank you for sponsoring this video. A big thank you to you. Lastly, I also need to ask you to check me out on Facebook and Instagram. If you don't follow me there, um, I talk a little more frequently, a little more freely there. Um, so be sure to do that. Also, I'll put a link down below to the actual real full sugar recipe for this on my personal channel, West Shoemaker. It's probably going to be called something about Robert Redford in the, in, the, in, the, in the title. So be sure to look for the link in the video description or at the end of this video if you are so inclined. Otherwise, lots more low carb videos coming here on this channel. Lastly, I need to thank my rock stars, my Patreon members. They are truly what keeps this all this going. If you don't know what Patreon is, think of it as the tip jar for the internet. It lets people like you who enjoy what the people like me do here on YouTube. You can give a dollar or two a month just to sort of keep the train on the track. So that's these guys that are scrolling, I believe. Oh, well, I think it's over here. I do that every time. <laughs> all right, guys, I love you. And remember, today is a good day to have a good day. Bye-bye. Uh -huh.